I'm Eric Barrett, firefighter paramedic from Station 12. This is Report on Conditions. This week, we take you to an accessible rescue near Lake Elsinore and a traffic collision on Ortega Highway, as well as a structure fire in Rubido. And we stop by Station 77 in Lake Riverside to celebrate their new apparatus bay. Hi, I'm Captain Richard Cordova, and thank you for joining CAL FIRE, Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. Last week from January 30th through February 5th, our firefighters responded to 3,626 calls for service, including 2,710 medical emergencies and 90 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 12 were vegetation fires and 13 were structure fires. Let's check out a few highlighted incidents from this past week. On Wednesday, February 1st, around 8.30 in the evening, firefighters responded to a structure fire with multiple reports of patients trapped. The first arriving engine reported active fire from the residential structure. Thankfully, occupants had evacuated and did not need to be rescued. After about two hours and with help from Riverside City fire engines, firefighters contained the fire to the structure of origin. Two civilians were treated for minor injuries and one was transported to a local area hospital. The American Red Cross was requested to assist four adults and two children who were displaced. Unfortunately, three pets in the home perished and animal control was also requested to assist. On Friday, February 3rd, just before noon, firefighters were called to a semi-truck on fire at the 23,100 block of Calico Road in Mead Valley. The first arriving engine company officer reported a semi-truck fully involved and exposure to additional truck. Power lines were affected and Southern California Edison responded. Fire personnel contained the fire to one semi-truck and remained on scene for an additional hour for overhaul. Around 10.45 p.m. on Friday, February 3rd, firefighters were dispatched to vehicle traffic collision on Highway 74, known as Ortega Highway, near the candy store. Once on scene, firefighters reported significant damage to both vehicles and two patients with monitor injuries. The patients were transported to a local area trauma center for further treatment. Both lanes of the highway were closed for a short duration while firefighters and highway patrol officers cleaned up the debris on the roadway. At about 5 p.m. on Saturday, February 4th, firefighters responded to an accessible rescue near the Interstate 15 and Lake Street. Firefighters and Riverside County Sheriff's Department located a dirt bike rider who had crashed their motorcycle. Firefighters were able to carry the patient from the dirt trail onto the road where they were transported via ground ambulance and a local area trauma center for further treatment. Shortly after midnight on Sunday, February 5th, firefighters responded to multiple reports of a vegetation fire on Highway 86 Expressway near Avenue 66 in Mecca. As the first fire engine left the station, they saw a large column of smoke and proactively requested several more engines to respond. Once on scene, the engine company officer determined three quarters of an acre was burning in heavy vegetation with the potential to burn up to 50 acres. Palm Springs Fire and Cathedral City Fire assisted us with fire engines and water tender. After several hours, firefighters were able to contain the fire to two acres and crews remained on scene for the remainder of the morning performing extensive mop-up. I got what it takes. I've got what it takes. I've got what it takes. February 5th through 11th is National Burn Awareness Week so this is the perfect time for us to share some quick tips from our colleagues at the American Burn Association to help keep everyone safe from burn injuries. Make sure to establish a kid-free zone of at least three feet away from the stove and in any area where hot food or drink is being prepared. Similarly, avoid holding children while cooking or carrying hot items because this balancing act can result in scolds or burns to one or both of you. When it's bath time, take a moment to run your hand through the water in the tub before you put your child in to ensure there's no spots of hot water. If you use a microwave to warm up foods or liquids, make sure you open any lids away from your body to avoid a steam burn. Finally, when you take your coffee or tea to go, 
make sure your travel mug has a tight fitting lid to avoid catastrophe in case it tips over. All of these small steps will help to ensure you and your family are safe and burn free. Earlier this week, the Riverside County EMS Agency's Pre-Hospital Medical Advisory Committee recognized two engine crews for their excellent performance on medical emergency incidents. First were Fire Captain Eric Bruscano, Fire Apparatus Engineer John Riley, and Firefighter 2 Paramedic Matt Cadena for a CPR save in Temecula. Next up was Fire Captain Keith Keller, Fire Apparatus Engineer Justin Asselrod, and Firefighter 2 Paramedic Bram Perry, who received recognition for a pediatric drowning save. Congratulations, gentlemen. I sure am proud and honored today to be here at the ribbon cutting for our new apparatus bay here at Lake Riverside Station 77. This project has uh, been on the books for a number of years, and it's a very exciting time for us to be out here and cut the ribbon, get this facility open. It's gonna be a great benefit and asset to the entire region. We have been working diligently with the county as well as our facilities personnel to finally bring it to fruition. Certainly this is a long time coming. It involves a lot of different departments. It involves our facilities management and certainly the team at Cal Fire, the Riverside unit and the Riverside County Fire Department to make this a reality. It just took time. It took time, it took, took effort, it took funding, and we finally uh, were able to put everything together, uh, get everything lined up, and, and execute the, the project. Before, it was not a drive-through bay. It was simply, you had to back in, it held one piece of apparatus. This new bay allows us to have four apparatus. We've uh, added to ensure that we have extractors, as well as we've added a compression station or a station to fill our air bottles. We've installed a Plyma vent in the system, and what that system does is capture the carcinogens or diesel particulate matter that comes from driving the apparatus bay in and out of the facility. They have a workshop where they can maintain all their tools and their equipment. Uh, there's, a, there's a restroom out here. I would like to thank Rose Salgado, our Facilities Management Director. I'd be a, a big failure not to thank Rose from the Facilities Management that have really worked through this project with us. Couldn't happen without our facilities personnel. Uh, Rose Salgado and her team at Facilities Management all got involved to make sure that this thing happened and we got it to completion. Chuck Washington from District 3 has just done terrific in supporting all of that we try to do for public safety. And obviously, this, none of this happens without the support of the Board of Supervisors and Supervisor Chuck Washington. Austin Kahneman, Brian White, and Brian Mann, those three gentlemen have been key to the success of this building, even though they're not here. Uh, they do a lot of good work uh, from behind the scenes. I absolutely want to thank our executive office, especially the CEO, Jeff Van Wagenen, as well as our CEO, Juan Perez. They've been instrumental in helping us get this through. The executives from our county board, our Riverside County, as well as our electeds. Well, certainly I'd like to thank Chief Weiser. I'd like to thank the whole uh, executive staff at the fire department. I'd just like to take a moment to thank uh, Chief Weiser and Chief Fish uh, for making sure this came to fruition for Battalion 11 and the residents here in Lake Riverside. Most importantly, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Bill Weiser uh, for his leadership and his commitment to the cause and continuing to make the Board of Supervisors aware of where we are, where we stand, how urgent the situation is, and why we need to fund these projects. Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department played a role in Disney's animation Planes, Fire, and Rescue. The story is about Dusty Crophopper, a racing plane that retires from racing and wants to become a firefighting aircraft. Disney used two CAL FIRE air attack bases, Grass Valley in Northern California and Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base here in Riverside County. As you see, there are similarities. Here you see Grass Valley Air Attack Base from above and from the ground. In this clip, you see Windlifter working out. Here at Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base, is a workout area where firefighters will do their daily workout. One of the main characters, Blade Ranger, is based off of Helicopter 301 at a Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base. Cal Fire had many individuals that were subject matter experts to assist Disney. They informed them on fire technology, how to use aircraft on fires, and how retardant comes out of aircraft. So today is a very exciting day. It's a rare moment where first responders get to meet one of their patients who did um, survive CPR. We were able to surprise the patient that we had contact with 
who was in cardiac arrest, and uh, he is alive and healthy and well today, and we're celebrating that. And this happened back in uh, November. There was a call that came out of a uh, man in distress. When we arrived on scene, a bystander was doing CPR, um, and his 11-year-old son was blocking traffic for us. He fell off his bike and was laying in the middle of the road and the first person that stopped was Clint and his 11-year-old son, Clint Jr. I initially thought it was a bicyclist that got hit by a car, um, but that wasn't the case as soon as we got on scene. We were able to see that he was having a heart attack, a very large heart attack. Off-duty police officer come rolling up, and he had an AED device in his car. An automatic external defibrillator. It essentially is a portable monitor, similar to the monitors we used on an ambulance and on a fire engine. It just seemed like everything just kind of fell into place at the right moment in the perfect way, and to see it all come together like that with this kind of an outcome uh, is truly rewarding, and uh, I was pretty grateful to be a part of it. The uh, Good Samaritan that stopped and uh, rendered aid and notified uh, 911 of what's going on and let us know also what was going on, so we'll be somewhat prepared to us getting there with a good outcome. I definitely want to say thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. You gave us back our, the rock of our family and the daddy to the kids and my husband. And without you guys, we this day would look much, much different. So thank you so much for everything you do. That's going to do it for this week's Report on Conditions. To stay up to date on current incidents, as they happen in Riverside County, be sure to follow us at CalFireRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs, and Community Education Bureau, I'm Captain Richard Cordova. Thank you for watching.